Good afternoon ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve and you're watching Bushcraft with Steve Outdoors. Hope you're all well. Now then, guys and girls, I am extremely happy to report that we have just hit the 1,500 subscriber mark. And in fact, last time I checked, it was 1,515 to date. And honestly guys, this is all down to you fantastic folks tuning into the channel and joining me on my Bushcraft journey. So, my heartfelt thanks to you and I look forward to sharing more of my journey with you in the future. Now guys, on to today's video, and straight off the bat I can tell you it is going to be an extremely uncomfortable one for me anyway. Um, but to celebrate this momentous occasion, I have received a fantastic suggestion from one of you fine people. And that was to do a solo bushcraft overnighter using all of my oldest gear. Um, that suggestion came from Just Jamie, so thank you for that. So, tonight ladies and gents, we are going to spend a night in the Debris shelter, the bushcraft shelter we built in the last video. Um, using all of my oldest and trustiest gear. Trustiest? Trusted gear. So, let's crack on. Now then, upon inspection of the debris shelter, it does look a little bit damp and a little bit wet under there, which suggests to me the roofing material we put on the shelter wasn't enough. Now, unfortunately, the woodland is very, very claggy now, muddy, and all the available leaf litter has pretty much um, sodden and trampled into the mud. So, I have brought the Helicontech poncho. Another fun fact, um, when I was packing my bag with all my oldest gear, I forgot to put my bag of cordage in, so I have been hunting around the woodland. And luckily enough, I have found um, a little bit of cordage. You never really struggle looking, uh, finding cordage in this type of woodland. There's always something tied around a tree. So I'm gonna have to make do with this, and then we're going to take the poncho and just place it over the back ensuring we're going to be nice and dry under there tonight. I'm going to have a nice little fire out here um, and I've brought a little bit more gear which I'll show you later on, so. Now guys, this does feel a little bit like cheating to me, but I do want to remain as dry as possible through the um, duration of the video, so on this occasion, I'll call it a hack. And I seem to have sticks everywhere I need them, which is handy. Right from here, bit of cordage there, pull it out, and I think uh, it's nice coverage actually, made to fit. <laughs> and that is the bed for the night.
Right, ladies and gents, so we have now got the fire built for tonight. I don't want an all night fire, um, that should burn for two or three hours. We can get a pot of water over that and do some cooking in a bit. But in the meantime, I am going to cover that because we are expecting rain at six o'clock. We are currently half three, so not far off. But the shelter's ready, the fire's ready. Um, I think it's time to prepare some food. First, we're going to need a chopping board. Right, my fine folk, welcome to Far Flung Ste. In today's episode, we are going to slice an onion and slice a potato or two. Well, exciting. Start the potatoes. So, tonight's plan is to parboil these until they're nice and soft and then fry them in a pan of oil to accompany the steak and onion. I think these should complement it absolutely. No end. The chopping board is performing phenomenally. Thank you Mr Woodland for your contribution to tonight's meal. So, ladies and gents, good news. I've just checked the weather. Um, it is good news for now. I think we are going to dodge the uh, storm that is coming at six, but the rain will be coming for a couple of hours at one o'clock in the morning. So, I think that means we should get this fire going right now. It is currently 20 to five. It starts going dark about six. So if we get this going now, it should burn down enough that we can start cooking on it. Oh, and just so you know, guys, the more I look in there, the less inviting it looks. E. Not forgetting our little friend, Twiggy.
and that one can go away for a bit longer. Oh, can you see? Sorry guys, the camera might be hunting in and out a little bit. It is dark. It's like we've uh, missed the rain. It's very, very slightly spitting. As long as that's all it does until I'm in that shelter, because once I'm in there, I will not be coming back out. I have a fire in the pan. I think we'll put that one in just for a little bit longer. Add. Um, that one's dead. Fire! That'll do. Let that cool down a sec. The trusty. Mora. And I think just one half of the onion. Just for garnish. Right guys, I give you a la um, steak and potato with onion. It smells nice, if nothing else. Oh yeah. Right, I'm going to get tired up round here. Get me tea. And I'll come back for a chat. See you soon guys. Yeah. Bon appetit. I'm waiting for this. I'll tell you what guys and girls, I haven't been this muddy for a while. Bleed them. Boots are absolutely caked in mud. Slabs of mud. Horrible, claggy. Claggy stuff. So I can have a quick chat while I'm sat here guys because I won't be going anywhere soon. I'll probably be here in the morning because I won't be able to get up. <laughs> so first off, Trust Fire. It was a company who specialises in flashlights, torches. They have just been in contact with me over Instagram asking me if I would like to review and test one of their torches. Of course, I said yes. Being very, very careful mind that it wasn't a scam again. Um, so, we now have a new torch on the way to the channel for review. It should be here in the next couple of weeks. But, it is called um, the Mini Times 3 EDC. And it's actually a four function flashlight. We have a green dot laser. 5 kilowatt green dot laser. It has a UV output on it, UV light. It's a thousand lumen and it also uh, flood and spot. And it's a keychain torch this big. So it does look promising. The Coleman Lantern is behaving itself. Although we did have a bit of a panic scare before. For some reason when it's primed, and it's only done it tonight, it was fine yesterday. When I turn the valve to one to release the gas, it's letting off a like a stream of pure fuel. Uh, no matter how slightly I turn that valve. So there's something not right somewhere, but when it's going, it's fine. That's been going for a good hour now. Um, and that is a thousand lumen lantern, that one. I want to take that one to the Bushcraft Show. Um, when I did that lantern video, that was the one I wanted to bring out alongside that 639. 
um, but unfortunately it was broken and I think it's now only partially broken. So plans for the rest of the night. I am going to have to conserve some battery uh, for tomorrow's video and my boiled egg breakfast but I'm going to tidy up here, stoke that fire back up with some logs I've kept back, put everything in, in the bag and put that away, make sure there's no trip hazards about so I don't want to be falling over, skewering my eye on a stray branch and probably retire for the night. I've got no signal so I can't even YouTube or Netflix and chill. Can you Netflix and chill on your own? Or is that just wrong? Welcome back guys and girls. So, as you can see, I've retired into the shelter and I've squashed myself back as far as possible but I honestly don't think it's far enough. I can't remember how far that tarp comes over. I should have lent it over that way really but hey ho. We're expecting some rain at one o'clock so hopefully it's just a um, a passing shower or a bit of drizzle otherwise I'm going to be getting wet and so is my stuff oh well it's all part of the adventure so my steak and potatoes was absolutely delicious um, usually when I cook a steak outdoors it's either rubber or it's gone cold before I've got to it because I'm pissing about with the camera but no that was absolutely delicious tonight surprised myself oh my candles just fell out the older setting fire to the wooden floor tell you what I am absolutely roasting tonight in here guys it's probably the cold and it gives off some tremendous heat that well, yeah, it's, um, there's not really a wind coming through it's just nice and still and still no rain I'm hoping the uh, weather forecast changes in my favour tonight I have not much room in here literally I think this will be the one and only time I uh, keep in here but yeah I've enjoyed myself so far tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the content and I'll see you in the morning for breakfast. So until then guys, good night, take it easy, stay crafty, bye bye. Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, I am so happy that night is over. That is one of the muddiest, wettest, drippiest camps I've had for a long time. Pretty eventful night though, about 11 o'clock the police chopper um, went over after three times, I started counting, 14 times it circled me last night. Not me in particular, you know, I was too stealthy, they wouldn't have caught me anyway. Uh, they must have been looking for someone or something in this area three o'clock it started raining that woke me up again only because i was getting drips on my forehead <laughs> um yeah came down for about two two hours and the the poncho covered pretty much uh, the full length of the shelter but just gaps at the front where i'd not really covered it it was dripping through the branches and down on me but as soon as i threw the bivy bag over my head it was all right i went back off and um, I got up about half nine, if you care to know. So ladies and gents, I've had to pull myself away from the shelter because it is an absolute slop pit over there. I had to drag myself out on the bivy bag this morning, uh, trying to keep as clean as possible, but the boots are absolutely mud magnets. Right, ladies and gents, coffee time. And I do need to make a note in this video. Um, the old man, my father, watches um, all of my videos and he enjoys every one, but he pulled me up on the last one we did um, with the axe in the same woodland. Uh, and he said it was the only one I did where I didn't make a, um, a coffee. So, this one is for you, Dad. Oh, first one at day, lovely. Brazilian, first thing in the morning. And I've done these eggs just absolutely perfect. Creamy, creamy oak. Fantastic. Right guys, so I was looking through the comments section last night 
Um, I do apologise, I've not replied to a lot of them yet. I will get round to it today though. But um, there was one comment made me laugh. And um, I'm doing it now. I can feel myself doing it now you pointed it out. But it was a comment, a new subscriber, so thank you, first of all, for your support. And it was, um, we're all rooting for you, but try and relax when you're in front of the camera because you sound a bit like this. And <laughs> I can feel myself doing it. In fact, I'm not going to lie to you, I've done this video four times now because if I don't think about what I'm saying, um, my mouth kind of works faster than my brain. So if I just start ranting on, it just comes out in a mumbled mess and um, nothing makes sense. It's not coherent. So sometimes I have to pause to think about what I'm saying. So I'd have to do a video five times over. I hope that explains things to you. This egg is not peeled as nicely as the others. Golden yellow. And on that note, ladies and gents, it's time to say goodbye. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I have certainly enjoyed being out in the woodland, enjoying nature once again. I certainly haven't enjoyed swimming about in the claggy mud, being dripped on all night, and waking up to snail trails all over my cap and bivy bag. But it was a successful camp, and we did wake up alive, because who wants to wake up dead? That's just inconvenient. But until the next one, you stay safe, and as always, stay crafty. See you again, guys. Bye-bye.